Let's continue with the message that we've been dealing with. Church growth challenge. Church growth challenge. Um, I'm, I'm saying church growth challenge. If you check, I'm sharing all the things that will help our church to grow. And I'm sharing the things as well today that will hinder. All right? So, I want you to understand that the Lord said that I must prepare you guys for growth so that when other people are coming, you are in your right place. So this church thing, I've been doing it for a long time. Got some beatings and everything, but I know how it works. So, Jesus prepared the 12 for millions. He stayed with 12 men. He taught them, trained them, corrected some errors and some mindsets because he was preparing me and you to come. Are you hearing me? So uh, it's, it's important to prepare the 12. Otherwise, you cannot be able to impact the world. It's only the 12 that impacted the world. For the gospel to be preached and to be even around the world, it only took 12 men that had to be trained. Are you hearing me? So you need to understand that as you are here, you are part of the 12, whatever 12 you think. All right? Uh, yeah. So I'll tell you the topic today. I'll tell you the topic today. So they told you that Jesus Collective is at 17 August or something like that, doing the, the, their second al album or something like that. So it's good. Uh, so, so Nompo and Masi are here. Yes, they look good from Johannesburg. Yep, lovely to have you guys. Uh, the Church Growth Challenge, the subtopic is avoid offense and bitterness as you serve in the house of God. Did you hear that? Avoid what? Avoid offense and bitterness as you serve in the house of God. These two are related. Once you get offended, one step, you are one step to, to bitterness. But, but sometimes it, it really does not start with hurt. It can start with anger. Then leads to hurt. Then it leads to bitterness. Are you hearing me? So I, I will try. I'll try. I'm, I, I'm preaching I'm, I'm preaching this way because we are moving to summertime and uh, by summertime then we are going to we are going to the people we are going to collect them are, are you hearing that? God is giving us a mandate this church has too much grace there's too much grace in this church too much anointing too much presence and it's not only us that need that there are some broken people out there that needs the touch of God. So it will be cruel of us to keep such presence of God and such power of God only to ourselves. Are you hearing that? Somebody out there is contemplating suicide. Some have died already. Maybe if we came before they commit suicide, we might have saved some people. So you need to understand that what God has given us, we don't need to look down on it because it is genuine and it is power. Are you getting that? It's like when the presence of God comes here, it's not a fake. Yeah, it's, it's not acting. Yeah, you can choose not to respond, but you'll feel that this is God. God is here. Okay? So God has trusted us that we should take His presence to the people who need it the most, all right? So we're going to do that. But for now, let us, let us train ourselves. Let's receive the training. Now, one thing that Jesus Christ says about the offense, he says that offenses are unavoidable. Offenses are un 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 unavoidable. As long as you leave, you've got a chance to be offended. You have a chance to be offended. In the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 1, Luke chapter 17, verse 1, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. The Bible says, then, 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 said, then he said to his disciples, to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses, it is, it, it is impossible, okay, 
it is impossible that no offenses should come. So it's, it's impossible to live without offense. You'll get it everywhere. You can get it from home. You can get it from your partner. You can get it from your, you can get it at work. You can get it at church. You see? But the amazing thing, people can be offended everywhere and take it but church. So for me, it is so intriguing to know this. That people can go to work offended. They can go to work offended. No, go to work. Go and work. Offended, but go to work. But if offended at church, stay home. Are you hearing that? I'm trying to help somebody here. All right. I've got, there's no time I've, you know, I got saved when I was a teenager. There's no, I've been hurt many times. There's no hurt that ever stopped me from coming to church. And Satan knows it. Are you hearing that? Whether I'm strong, I'm weak, I'm wrong, I'm right, nothing takes me away from God's house. It, listen, sometimes this just has nothing to do with, with uh, 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 it has nothing to do with, uh, with so it, 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 not all with maturity. It has something to do with, with personal decision. Huh? Yeah, it's not, it's not maturity that you are going to work, but you are offended. Are you hearing me? But for the fact that you are offended, it means you are immature. But you still go with that offense, you still work with that offense, and your colleagues can see that this week or this month you've got long face. And nobody cares because we are here for money, all of us. Okay, we're never, we never came to be friends, right? So you get it? So now, so now, you have to understand that offenses will come. It's a promise. You like, you like, you can change the church. But as soon as you come to that church, you must know that offenses are on the way. Are, are you hearing that? And, and the reason, now here's the issue now, is the reason now. And, and most of the time, most of the time, people who get offended are people who have experienced much love. Much, much more at church. I can tell you the truth. Much more at church. People who have received love. Why love the church? Oh, there's such love there. Oh, it's such love. Uh, then offended. I can't believe that. Because all you need is love. You, that's what you came for. Now, if something totally different comes, then what happens now? Then it hits you down to the point that you cannot rise. It's like children who are spoiled. They are spoiled. You protect them from anything wrong. You don't want them to fall. You don't want, to, you don't want their little hands or their little feet to be cut by the bottles and things like that. You are protect but when you protect them from pain, you are robbing them of, of maturity. Kids must be hurt. They, they must be. Because if they don't get hurt while they are small, they'll get hurt when they are mature, when they are adult. Not mature, let's say adult. They'll get hurt. So that's why you've got people, people who lived well and lived in comfort and were taken care of. Normally they fail in life. Because when they face the reality, the brutality of life, that people can make mistakes, people can hurt you, people can give you pain, people can betray you. When they face that, then they face the reality of the world and they, they, it's different from home. And then all of a sudden, mommy is dead. You know, and, 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 and dad is dead, double D then they have to face. This is now where you get kids who grew right going to things like drugs to numb their pain because they can't deal with the offenses of life. They need something to numb the pain because they never faced the pain while they were still young. Because Papa and Mama were protecting them from pain all the time. That's why you need a mother's love and a father's love. They are not the same. When you fall all the time, 
your mother because you were, you were in the womb. Oh, oh, oh my, my child. Oh, oh, you fall all the time. You can even make yourself fall for attention. And mama will not even see. Mama will still say, oh. Your father will say, get up. Why do, what's wrong with your head? Why do you keep on falling? That's it. End of story. And that's love, but we don't know it because we think that love is feeling. You see that? But love is discipline. Discipline is love. That's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, he who loves his son disciplines his son. He who does not discipline his son does not love his son. So, can I receive love when it comes in the form of discipline or I will interpret as if I'm not loved. You see that? So Jesus says, if, let's continue. He says that they, will, they should come, they will come. Then he says, but he says, but woe to him through whom they do come. So you got that. Now what does that mean? It means when you have brought an offense, quickly repent. Because if you don't, the woe will get you. <laughs> did, did, did you get that? War to whom the offenses. There are people who have their life rotating in one place because they keep on hurting people. And when you keep on hurting people, people are spiritual. There's something called solical power. Do you, do you know what is solical power? Can I explain to you? I might have explained before. Let me explain it to you. Solical power, normally it's power that we are not supposed to use without God. Solical power sometimes can operate like witchcraft. You hurt somebody, depending the depth, the depth, the depth of the head. You may find yourself, your life rotating. Then you get a prophecy, no, one woman. That's why your life is like this. That woman, you hurt that woman. <laughs> as a result of hurt, and as a result of solical power, as a result of certain, now you carry a certain atmosphere as a result of what you did. No, it's not witchcraft. Are you, are, you, are you hearing me? It's not what? That's what the Bible says. It says, honor your mother and father. All right? Not when they are right, even when they are wrong. You still honor them just because they are your parents. Why? Because they can make your life miserable. Why? By their heart. A hurt heart of a parent can destroy a child's future. She does not need to say anything to you. For the fact that she does not wish you well because of the behavior you carry and because of the way you do things or the because of the way you keep on hurting her. So then that can have consequences. Are you getting that? So now that's why the Bible says that if you go to worship, he says, then you remember that there's a brother that you know, you know, you did not reconcile well. The Bible says drop the offering. And then go to your brother and what? Huh? And reconcile. Big oh, let me tell you something. Listen. Offense is dangerous than sin. Did you hear what I said to you? Did you hear? That? Because with offense, there is woe. Oh, woe. Oh. What is woe? It's woe. 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 Okay, woo. Is it woo or woe? Huh? Okay, woe unto the person. There is a woe unto the person. With sin, there's grace. Where sin abounds, grace abounds more. But offense, yeah, you don't understand the power of offense. Listen, Satan was just offended in heaven. That's all. And then he lost his position. He lost his identity from Lucifer to Satan to devil. 
Okay. Now, we know that we cannot avoid. So it means that I have a chance to be offended all the time. And the offense, okay. A chance to be offended. You can be offended now. You just can, you, you can be offended that I'm speaking about offense. It's possible all the time. Everywhere. Okay, are you hearing me? Now, if you read the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, Matthew chapter 13, verse 55 to 57, the Bible says, um, uh, uh, Jesus Christ is going to, to, to where he was born and he was preaching and, you know, wanting to do miracles and things like that in that place. Then the Bible says, is this not a carpenter's son? The people say, is not the carpenter's son? Is, is, is not his mother called Mary? His brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. Some of you, you don't know that one of the brothers of Jesus was called Judas. Because to us, Judas is a negative name. But it's not. It's Jacob in the Old Testament. So are you hearing me? Now look at this. Um, then they said, and his sisters, we know the, the sisters, are they not all with us, living with us? Where then did this man get all these things? Continue. They are amazed at his wisdom and the way he teaches. So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, in his own house. When Jesus was teaching the mysteries of heaven, Jesus was not teaching like the disciples. Jesus had a different grace. Jesus had a different gifting altogether. Jesus had a different message. Right? So now, the Bible says they were offended at him. Why? They say, how come you know these things and we don't know them? Okay, let me ask a question. Did, did Jesus do anything wrong there? You don't need to be wrong for people to be offended. Okay, are you hearing me, somebody? You don't need to be wrong. You just need to be good and successful. Other people are offended by that. There are people who don't love peace. I want trouble. Always, you know. <laughs> I don't want peace. So, <laughs> so people are, off there are people like that. There are people in your, your relatives. You are asking yourself, why are they not talking to you? You are asking yourself, why have they changed? Yeah, you ask, listen, you will ask yourself until you die. You don't need to do anything wrong for people to be offended at you. Some will just be offended by your hairstyle. Maybe they don't like your nose. Whatever that may be. Are you hearing me? So Jesus did not do anything. He is doing the work of the Father. He is teaching the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He is empowering the people. And then there are some people among those people that took offense at Jesus for doing Good. Don't ever think that when you do good, there will be no offense that come. The people that will offend you the most are the people that you gave a lot for. If you don't know, ask a pastor. One of the things we don't have to do is but people don't like weak pastors. We need to act strong all the time. Yeah, even when you feel that today, ish, I'm out. But it's all for them. Let me. Then you go. Then you go home and cry. They don't know that a big man of God is crying alone. They have no idea, because you have to be strong, right? But the issue is this. Oh, let me leave that one alone. Uh, <clears throat> now, 
Can you see now? He, Jesus Christ says, he, he, he says that a prophet is without honor. You know, the proximity, he says, in his own house, proximity breeds familiarity. If you can come and live with me in my house, you have more chances to be familiar. That's why there are pastors who seem not loving. They preach from the pulpit, go to the car. <laughs> are you hearing me? Yeah, there's no greeting. Oh, pastor, you hey, know, hey. no, nothing like that. Are you hearing that? They want to keep a certain image. Because when you come closer to them, you will discover they are as human as you. And as pastor, we don't like people to know that we are human. We want them to say, listen, did I tell God anoints human beings? They're anointed. <clears throat> They have human features, like everybody. But the anointing, God chose them before he knew them. He created them because he needed them. Are, are you kidding me? And then God put his hand on them. And then they did not need to qualify. Nothing they had to do. No exam to write. No, qualify, no qualifying test. God just said, I like you. I just want to use you. And the amazing thing that God uses them in spite of them. So do you see this now? Now this is offense right there. Are you hearing me? Because probably according to me, there are some people that God should not use. You know why? Because I have my own reasons. Yeah, because of this, because of that, because of that, and things like that. But now the Bible says the gifts of God are without repentance. If God has given you a gift, he does not change because you change. So now the offense is, be, 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 look at this please. People can be offended by your success. Because they know things about you that they think you don't qualify. But grace is grace. And who decides grace is God who decides grace. He decides. So now what is happening now, look at this. Jesus as a man has been chosen to be a savior, not the Pharisees. God would have made one of the Pharisees to be a redeemer. One of the Pharisees to be Jesus, to be given Jesus. But he did not see it that way. And to, and to the Pharisees, Jesus was not qualifying because he did not keep the Sabbath. He did not do everything almost like the Jews. He was not the true Jew and things like that. They are looking from the outside. You know what God said to, 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 uh, to, to uh, who is this, Samuel? God said, God said, people look at the outside. If you deal with offense, dealing with people, don't look at the outside appearance. A person can look angry, but in fact, when you look on the outside, they are sad. But you pick up anger. Do you see how mysterious people are? Huh? A child can be rude. On the outside. Broken. On the inside. Needing love and attention. We don't always see things right. That doesn't make sense to you. You see, so, so, so God comes to Samuel 
and Samuel is supposed to, to choose the king, you know, to anoint the king, you know, and he goes to David's house and he sees the big guys with muscles and all, because t David was, was tiny, he was not big. Then, then he thought, Eliab, I think one of his brothers was, was going to be a king. And God says, no. Th then God said these words. He says, people are looking at the outside appearance. Your outside appearance can offend certain people. Like many introverts are interpreted as being mean. I don't like, I don't like the way, the way, the way. Because people, they equate appearance with heart. But God knows how to draw the difference. You know, there are certain people that I thought were mean. Because I read them that way. When I come close, hey, this person is the sweetest person that I've ever met. But first time appearance... Aha. No, no, no. I did not see that. You get that? Because people are people. So now, then God has, has, has a privilege of looking at the heart. We don't know the heart of a person until they act or until they talk. Are you getting that? And that's the reason. That's the reason God gets offended with people we applaud. And get right with people we are offended at. Okay. So offenses will always come. Offenses are unavoidable. Number two. Failing to rightly handle, handle offense leads to bitterness. So, at one stage or another, you'll find yourself that you have to handle offense if it's not properly pro, pro, properly properly if it's not properly uh, handled it will lead to bitterness i'm going to speak about bitterness in a moment in the book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 so the bible tells us how to handle offense it says, be angry. You have a right to be as, as emotional as much as you can because of what has happened to you. You have, you have the right to sit with yourself and recognize every emotion within you. Right? You have been heard, right? The Bible says, don't deny it. Don't deny it. Have you ever seen people when they hurt and they say, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Then they go home, they say, be real, right? Be what? If something has upset you, be real. That's real. But now being real there is not action. It's a state of being. In other words, don't hurt somebody just because you are hurt and you are angry. There's no action attached there. Be angry. Then it comes to action. And do not sin. Yeah, which is very difficult. Yeah, because if I want to tell you the peace of my mind. You know, you want to give it all. Yeah? You, you, you just want to give it all. You say, no, no, I'm not going to beat him. I, I just want to, just to hold him. You know, there are times like that, right? Yeah. You say, no, I just want to hold him strong. Or something like that. But be angry, but do not sin. Number three, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Sun is hashing. You know hash? Like a chicken sitting on the eggs. Then the eggs turn from being liquid. Then they are moving things. Are you hearing that? So now the Bible says there, if you don't take care of your anger and let the sun go down on your anger, it will change to something else. Why shouldn't you sleep angry? 
because your mind processes everything that happened during the day while you are sleeping. Your mind is not sleeping. That's why you wake up in the morning with all types of feelings and everything. If you don't get rid or, or what can I say? If you don't serve, if you don't, if you don't detox yourself of the disappointments that happen in the day, the next day you can be a totally different person altogether. So in other words, I don't need to be sleeping at night and blah, 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 blah. my mind is like blah, 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 because the mind is processing things. And at that time, you are becoming something that you are not, that God has never created you to become. And many people who have these things, they don't talk a lot. A person was very bubbly and talking. All of a sudden, he said, mm, how are you? Mm, fine. Insight. Activity. Subconscious minds processing things. and uh, It's a bloody situation, I'm telling you. Because bitterness can change your whole character. Change your whole being can turn you to an animal that you never thought that you would. There are people who are behind bars. I have spoken to gangsters and I found those are nice boys. You know nice boys? These, these are very good boys. They love their family. They love their sisters. They love their mom. But you wonder, how come you kill people like this? You get it? It's, it, it's not because they are bad. It's because they failed to process and to hang, handle anger and offense and hate. Offended that my father never took care of me. Offended that my father died when I was 10. My offended. They are offended by the events of life. And they failed to process those things. And as they slip. Their conscious mind, their, their subconscious mind is working, working. When they wake up the next morning, then they are drawn to the gun and not even know why. So are you hearing me? So don't let the sun go down on me. You know, don't, don't let that one, right? Don't let the sun go down because... In other words, I'm offended this, this morning, but before I sleep, I say, God, help me. Help me to walk like Christ and to talk like Christ. Help me to have your love. Help me, help me to forgive. You see, you, 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 you yeah, 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 yeah. You, you have to. Because you can't do this without the help of God. You know, you, you, you need the help of God. Before you even sleep, you need to discharge You need to do what? To discharge. So if we don't handle it, then it begins to deal with us and it leads to bitterness if we don't handle offense well. Number three, bitterness defiles the whole person. So it must be uprooted. You know why it's called bitterness? Because of the bitter heart. Bitterness causes your heart to be bitter. In fact, bitterness is something you can feel. When you are bitter, you know that I'm not angry now. I'm bitter now. Guys, bitterness is bitter than alu. So now... I have to understand that when I'm bitter, I am defiled. I'm dirty. I'm not only dirty to me, but I'm dirty before God. And if you check very well, remember, Abel, Abel died because of bitterness. Cain became bitter. An amazing thing about bitterness that it changes your face. 
God comes to, to, to Cain and says, Why is your face downcast? It's like this. It's not like this. This is smiling if it goes up. If it goes down, uh, 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 bad news. And then God says, Why did you allow Satan? In other words, bitterness happens through allowance. You don't automatically become bitter. It's a process. It starts with anger. It goes to hurt. It goes to offense. Then it leads to bitterness. It's a process. You don't become bitter one day. It does not happen. It's not an event. You are led by your emotions to bitterness. It starts by failing to control anger. Failing to, for, failing to forgive. Failing to let go. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. The Bible is telling us here to be careful. It's telling us to be careful. It, it says looking carefully. Somebody say looking carefully. Looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. Now, I want you to understand this. The man says, careful, be careful. Right? Because when you have bitterness, you are running short of grace of God. Because bitter people, are, you can't be bitter and be grace, gracious at the same time. So that we don't run short of the grace of God. How can I keep the grace of God? By keep on forgiving. By keep on loving the people who don't deserve to be loved. By loving people like Christ loved me. Loving them with their mistakes and loving them with their, with their shortcomings and loving. Because I have my shortcomings too. And Jesus loves me the way I am. So I need to pass the same love. As the Bible says, love one another as I have loved you. So as Jesus, I become the standard of love. Like Peter, you denied me, I still loved you. And like Thomas, you, 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 you doubted me but I still loved you. Like Philip you keep on asking me questions and you don't understand me but I still love you. And the Bible says he loved his own until the end. He loved his disciples until the end. He loved them through their weakness. He loved them through their strong points. He loved them through their, their being mean. He loved them even when they were mean to each other. He taught them forgiveness. Jesus they had to the same way. The weaknesses they had with one another was a ministry that they they had to do to one another you are not weak for Mahala God is teaching you that if I can, if I can love you as a mess as you are as a shameful as you are so love other people so bitterness is failure to love yourself you can't be bitter and love yourself Because bitterness is poison. How can you keep poison in your heart? The Bible says it defiles. The word defile does not only mean just dirty, but it also means that it develops high blood pressure. It can develop sugar diabetes. It can develop cancer. It has been proven by science that keeping anger can cause cancer. Other people are dead today and nobody bewitch them. They bewitch themselves by keeping bitterness. Bitterness against the ex-husband. Bitter for the rest until you develop breast cancer. Because bitterness causes our body to stay in the mode of tension all the time. When you are bitter, you are stiff. Your body is vibrating all the time, even when you don't know. 
Forgiveness is healing. Forgiveness is a good atmosphere. Forgiveness is freedom. So he says that, now, can you see how does bitterness start? Bitterness, the Bible here does not speak about fruits. It speaks about that bitterness has a process. It starts as a root before fruits. But baby, if you don't deal with the root, we're going to see the evidence of fruits sooner. In other words, God says, when bitterness starts, you can feel it and you need to uproot it at that time. Are you kidding what I'm trying to say to you? When you begin to snap, they talk about a person that you are angry with, you begin, ah, you begin to snap and just watch it and say, oops, oops. Notice. Is that clear to you? But what is painful about this is that it means that when I'm bitter, then I'm falling short of the grace of God. In other words, the grace of God is not evident in my life. I'm running short. Now, can I tell you something? It is the grace of God that helps, helps us to be sober. It's the grace of God that helps us to be human. So which means if I'm bitter, I have cut myself short from the grace of God. Now, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10. The Bible tells us clear here. It says that the heart knows its own bitterness. When you are bitter, you will know. You get it? When you are bitter, you'll, you'll what? You will know. There is no way that I don't know. Because bitterness is in me. So I will no. The heart knows its bitterness. And a stranger does not share its joy. A stranger does not share. Hey, there's no joy. I can't be bitter and be happy at the same time. Huh? It does not go together. So when you are bitter, you fake everything. You fake the smile, you fake the laughter, you fake the you fake everything. Because it defiles. So, how many of you know? How many of you know? You know, I clean the house, but I'm not I, I don't clean that much. I'm uh, just manageable. Yeah. So, no, I don't like a dirty house. Uh, I'm, I must tell you, uh, I'm not like Steve Harvey. No, I'm far better than him. Have you have you ever seen when, when 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 the house is dirty, like the dishes are not washed, right? Everything is dirty. There's dirt. There's there's everything. Have you, have you noticed that? Have you ever seen, have you ever noticed that after, after it's cleaned, how refreshing. Have you ever noticed that it even touches your emotion? A clean house will make you feel good. When you feel good in debt, there's something wrong with your head. I'm not that active cleaner. I'd rather pay somebody who's going to clean. At least let, it, let us get it cleaned, cleaned up, you know. Because in a house that is cleaned, you can breathe. Huh? You are even confident if somebody knocks, you don't think twice. 
There are those when we knock, they take five minutes to open. They are running around. While I'm knocking, you are running around because we are trying. So, so defilement is not good, right? It's, it's like a person who's unfortunate. Eh? In the house, a person who passes the guests just before two seconds you knock. They pass the guests and you are knocking in two seconds and they, they go around. They, they switch on the fan. <laughs> and you wonder, it's winter. Is it, my friend, you like, <laughs> you, 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 I, I just laugh, you know. I, I just laugh, fan. It's just, <laughs> no, 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 not at eight degrees Celsius. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. I'm, I, I'm, 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 uh. That's why you should cut down on meat. When you cut down on meat, when you pass gas, you smell it, nothing. The meat people. Yo. You smell their thing, you say, did I smoke dark or something? No. You meat people. Yeah, eat it, but not every day like you do, please. Yeah, so... Uh, one of my friends went to Germany. One of my friends, is, is, uh, my friends went to Germany. And he, and, and he ate, he was, they, they were eating like veg, vegetables and fruits a lot, you know, like that. Yeah. And he calls me. He says, wow. Wow. I said, wow, wow. Hey, wow. He says, and I went to the loo. I can, uh, sorry, I can, I can, uh, I can pass cats. And uh, sorry, this is uh, church. <laughs> he says, I can pass cats and everything. He says, it's just, this is nothing. Nothing what? He says, I don't smell anything. I say, my brother, keep on doing what you are doing. You've got oxygen everywhere. From the mouth to the back, everywhere, oxygen everywhere. It's, it's good for you. Continue to do it. Now, the heart knows its bitterness. As I'm speaking to you now, if bitterness is creeping into your heart, you will know it. But after having no, uh, noticed it, you have to deal with it. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31. Ephesians chapter, verse 4, uh, chapter 4 verse 31 to 32. That's what, are you getting something out of this? <clears throat> it says... Now, Paul is speaking to, to the church because without this, we will never live peacefully with each other. It's just impossible. He says, let all what? Let all bitterness, wrath, anger. What's that word? Clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. With all malice. Now, if you notice there, you're going to notice that he starts with bitterness. And then he speaks about all the children that bitterness has given birth to. Because people who are bitter, they have wrath, which is a little bit stronger than anger. They have anger. Then they evil speak against those they are bitter against. But it says it must be put away from you, which means we have the power to put it away. God has anointed us to put it away. We can put it away. It does not have to control you. You can put it away. It does not have to lead you. You can put it away. The last one. Oh, no. The last, the last before last. What's that? Number four, we have 
we have to control anger. That's where it starts. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 11, cha chapter 19, 19 verse, verses 11. Proverbs chapter 19, verses 11. It, it says, it says, the discretion of a man makes him slow to anger. And his glory is to overlook a transgression. Other translation, offense. Overlooking offense. Do you know what is transgression? Do you see trans, transgression? I did not transgender. I said transgression, right? Now, look at this. If somebody is transgressing, it means he has crossed the fence of your boundary. That's offense. Why do you think we say it's offense? You get it? So now, then the Bible says the discretion of the man. What, 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 what's this now? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The discretion of the man. Okay, go to, go to verses uh, 10. Is it 10? Go to 10. Go back to 10. Huh? Uh, 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 go back to 11. Please go back to 11. All oh, the luxury things and what, what? You went back to discretion. I, I want offense. You see now, the, the Bible says a person's wisdom, that's, that's, I like that one. Uh, a, a person's wisdom, a person's wisdom yields patience. You have to be patient with people. Did you hear what I said to you? Ladies and gentlemen, hmm. we have to be patient with people. People are at different stages of growth and different stages of immaturity. There are things I did years back and I'm so embarrassed about them because at that time I was at the stage I was in the process and praise God for the people who give you grace while you are growing. All of us, we need grace to grow. All of us, we need to receive grace and give grace. So wisdom, so if I lack, I lack patience, it means I lack wisdom. If I lack patience, I lack wisdom. Now it means now I have become God to people. They have to change because I don't like it. They have to stop their weaknesses because I don't receive them. Oh, I wish I could uh, explain to you. No, leave it. It's okay. Are you kidding me? Ladies and gentlemen, I found out that if my demands do not allow people to enter the process of growth and the process of making mistakes, then I have become God. I have set myself as the perfection kind of a standard. If people have to change themselves to be around you, then you are more powerful than God. Because most of the time we don't fear God, that we fear people. So that's why we have secrets, but God can see in the secrets. Can you see that? God can see what? And still love you as you are. God will love you with evidence while people hate you on speculation. So can you see that? Can you see that now if I claim perfection and I am too strict and I am a perfection, it means now I am an idol. I've made idol out of myself. So by that I'm not human. 
It is human to forgive. It is human to love the unlovable. It is human to be patient. It is human to understand other people. It is human to invest grace to other people so that when you need it, you'll find it in the time of need because you have invested it yourself. Grace is an investment. Grace is an investment. If people can run to you with their limitations, with their shame, then you have not portrayed Christ. With Christ, you can be as wrong as much as you want. His love will minister to you. Can you, I'm always uh, perplexed by uh, this woman who works the work in the night, the, the queen of the night, and she took a bottle. She was working for, she, 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 she had a perfume, alabaster box. No, it was for business. It was not for Christ. She did not invest for Christ for the whole year. She was investing for clients. Okay. <clears throat> She was investing for clients that, 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 that as she comes, like half kilometer, you, 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 you'll smell her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they, if they, if they are 10, you'll say, which one? You know, you'll be able to. She was, she was improving her business. You all right, that? Okay. But the amazing thing that when she came to know Christ or know about Christ, she was not afraid of taking something that was a symbol of her shame. The reason why Jesus liked that woman is because that woman was not a hypocrite. She did not say, let me leave the bottle here and just go by myself or something. No, 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 no. She said, I will bring everything. Jesus, this bottle stands for how many men, uh, on how many, how, um, the number of men I've slept with, the things that I've done, the shame that I've put myself, the shame where I've put my family, everything is locked in the bottle. And I am going to pour to you and you will see what you do with it. But this is me, Jesus, is either you take it or you don't take it. You help me or you don't help me, but I don't have anywhere to go. Jesus loves genuine people. But the issue, we can't be genuine with people. Well, some of them, we become genuine with them, they die. So I did not expect this. They get traumatized. They go for counseling. But I know one man who's got shoulders wild enough one man who's got shoulders he can carry anything he can withstand anything he shed his blood he shed his life so he cannot be able to allow satan to have you the way he wants to have you jesus will wash you jesus will turn your life around. jesus will embrace you. jesus the more i grow in the lord the more I appreciate the fatherly heart of God. Rabbi says, prodigal son went away. But the father did not leave the house because the son left. The father remained in his territory, remained in his authority, and trusted that his DNA in his son one day will make his son to come to his senses. Yes, <laughs> the son, 
found the father where he left him. He is not the kind of father that you have to look for. He is not the kind of father that changes his mind. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he said he loves you yesterday, you don't have to ask today if he still loves you. He is a stable father. The Bible says when we are unfaithful, the Bible says God remains. We serve a God who remains. Oh God. I love him. We serve a God who remains. He is remaining beautiful. He is remaining powerful. He is remaining healing. He is remaining lovely. He is remaining. He is remaining. He is remaining. He does not change because we change. He remains the same. We can trust him with our lives. We can trust him with our all. We can trust him with everything. He does not change. Then the Bible says, he remains faithful. Then it says, because he cannot disown himself. Because when he disowns himself, then it's over with me. And it's over with you. And there's no hope. The Bible says, Jesus, our hope. Oh, I'm not sure you hear this. I mean, Jesus, our hope. Jesus, our hope. I don't get people who deny Jesus. I don't get that. I was listening to, to Joshua Mapong. Denied Jesus openly. While Jesus loves people who have done more wrong things than him. How do you deny the person who has no shadow of turning? Has no shadow. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? What he spoke yesterday, he still speaks it now. And he still speaks it even tomorrow. That's, 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 that, that's him. One of the things that will cause us to cry in heaven. And be emotional. At least gloriously emotional. Is that will be in his arms, in his bosom in heaven. And then we will look back to our journey in our lives. And we'll look at things that would have made us not to make it but his promise kept us because he made an unconditional promise here's the unconditional promise of Christ some people don't know it I will never leave you I will never forsake you I will be with you until the end of time. No, that's not your promise. And is not expecting you to apply faith there. It has nothing to do with your faith. He says he will be with you. In other words, until the end. Until your, your last breath he says you may not feel him but he's there and the reason you're still breathing is because he has kept you that promise I can face anything in the world because my father because Jesus is with me now, being with you, it means he's with you when you are right. And he's with you when you are wrong. He's with you when you are sad. He's with you when you are happy. He is with you. Full stop. 
And this is the best thing that God has ever done to change us and to mature us. God does not use a shambok. He uses acceptance to change us. Just a few minutes as I close. Would you stand please? And just take some few moments to thank him for who he is. To thank him for helping you with offenses. To thank you. And if there's any offense in your heart, release it right now. If, if there's any start of bitterness, release it right now. Just release it. Just breathe it out and release it. Beat against your mom, your cousin, your sisters, your, your father, your colleague, your you know, friend you used to have, whatever, your ex-husband, ex-wife. Just, just speak and release and thank God for his faithfulness over your life. We thank you. Let me hear your voices. Let me hear your voices. We thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. There's no one like you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for having a God just like you. For having a God just like you. For having a God just like you. We thank you that you are not like Allah. We thank you that you are not like the gods of this world. We thank you. We thank you. We give you the praise for your love. We give you the praise for your message. We give you the praise for your patience. We give you the praise, Lord God, for your plans that you have for us. The plans to prosper us and the plans to, 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 to give us a good hope and a good future. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. La bamba shira kante le ba sonte ka grasata la baba kante la baba baba santa la kanda da la bosete ye abonde la baba baba santa la ka groshara kanta kada brikayo brikado la gras santa gre da ka brasada kada lembra be kente le ba sonte ke de boshente ke de dia lembra ka ba santa la ka baba baba kan ba ka ba ka ba ram baba baba kan bosete kanda kada da thank you thank you thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you. Rebanda la bakonte le basanta la kata. Rakabam bakabo senta kada bakam bakado. Rababa baba kam bakabakonta bashata. Laranda kada do santa kada dadaya. Lamba bakam boka brasata la kantaya. Sherebe rete la kanto da sata kata. Samba kata 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 kata. Ramba kapa 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 kapa. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sure.